This brings us to the first of our extension topics. I mean, we've looked at a, a couple of little things that are extension, like the uh, inequalities with the prime numeral and the denominator. So there are a few little specific things. This is the first actual topic of extension one. Um, permutations, combinations, or sometimes called counting techniques. So it all ties in with probability. And we, we start with the basic counting principle. If you're talking about different events that are happening, if um, one event can happen m different ways, and then it's followed by another event which can happen in n different ways, then the total number of ways the two things can happen is m times n. So it's a very basic idea. But something like this, uh, three dice are rolled. Okay, so we're going to throw three dice. How many ways can the three dice fall? In other words, how many possible outcomes are there? Well, we can think of it using this basic counting idea because we can say, hey, the first dice can roll six ways, then the second dice could roll six ways, the third dice can roll six ways. So all up, we get 216 possible outcomes. Well, what about if all three show the same number? Now, whenever we're trying to work out number of ways, we try to look after the conditions first, when we apply conditions to it. And the condition we put here is all three dice show the same number. So how do I think about this one? Well, I say six times one times one. Here's my logic. I say, well, the first dice, when I roll that, it really doesn't matter what number it shows. So there are six things it could show. But after that happens, there's only one way the second dice can go, because it's got to show the same number. And there's only one way the third dice can go, because it can only show one number. So all up, there's six different ways. I suppose, again, if you think about this intuitively, that makes sense, because look at what it's saying. How many ways can all three dice show the same number? Well, there's only six numbers. So six different ways they could. So now if I was to ask this probability question, what's the probability that all three dice show the same number? I don't need to draw up this huge tree diagram. I can say, well, it's 6 out of 216. The number of ways it can happen is 6 out of total number of possibilities, 216, which simplifies down to be a 1 in 36 chance. Here's an HSC question. Mice are placed in a maze, and the maze has got five exits. So each mouse is equally likely to move out of any of the exits. So therefore, the probability of any mouse leaving a particular exit is one-fifth. Four mice, conveniently named A, B, C, and D, put into the maze and they behave independently. So what one does doesn't affect what another one does. What's the probability they all go out the same exit? So I'm, I'm going to use the uh, basic counting idea, but use it with probabilities. So I'm going to say, well, the first mouse. They're all going to go out the same exit. Well, the first mouse can go out any door because right? it's free to go anywhere. So there's a one chance, probability of one, because it will leave. It's going to happen, probability of one. Now, the other mice have got to go through the same door. So what's the chance that the second mouse goes through that door? One in five. Chance that the third mouse goes through that door? One in five. Chance that the fourth mouse goes through that door? One in five. And so we get 1 in 125. If I had used it in a counting way, instead of going straight to the probabilities, the way I would have done it is I would have said, OK, so total number of possible ways. How many exits has, has the first mouse got to leave from? Five. How many for the second mouse? I don't know. I'm just going total number of possibilities. Oh, I'm not, yeah, OK, five. <coughs> Third mouse? And fourth mouse, five. But, okay, if they all go through the same door. So ways they go through the same door. Okay, first mouse, how many exits? Second mouse, now it's one. And so I go five times one times one times one, which gives me five over five times five times five times, five times over 625, which again gets me the same answer of 1 or 125. So I was using the probabilities there, but it's still using the same idea. Work out total number of ways it can happen without any restrictions. 
So that's five times five times five times five. And now work out the number of ways it can happen with the restriction. Five times one times one times one. Probability, put that over the top of the first answer and, and, and you've got it. Okay, let's have a look at this one. Probability that A, B and C come out the same exit. D comes out a different exit. All right, so A, B and C use the same exit. D uses a different exit. Okay, first mouse is going to leave. I've chosen D for the first mouse. Okay, D can go through any door. So five on five if I'm using that idea or probability of one. Next mouse can't go through the same door as D because D is using a different exit to all the others. So four in five chance. There's five total possibility, but only four it can go through. So four over five. Uh, we've still got A and B to go out. Well, they're now going to be one in five because they've got to go out the same door as, um, which one was this one? Oh, I didn't say which one this was. So if that was C, go out the same door. So giving us a grand probability of four in one twenty-five. What is the probability that any three of the four mice come out the same exit and the other mouse comes out a different exit? We just worked out the probability that D uses a different exit and the others go through the same. And we found out that was 4 in 125. Well, the mice are equally likely. They've all got a 1 in 5 chance. So that just happened to be D doing it. This question is saying, look, any of them. Any. So probability that A uses a different exit would also be 4 in 125. Probability that B uses would also be 4 and 125. Probability that C uses would also be 4 and 125. So therefore, the probability that any mouse uses a different exit and the other three go through the same door would be four lots of 4 and 125, 16 and 125. Then the final part of the question was, what's the probability that no more than two mice come out the same exit? No more than two. Okay. No more than two. I'm going to use remember the complementary idea and probability. Sometimes it's easier to work out the other situation, subtract it from one. And that's what I'm going to do. Because if you think of no more than two, what's the other thing that could happen would be more than two. In other words, three come out the same exit, which we just worked out in part three and four come out the same exit, which is what we worked out in part um, one or two. I can't remember which part it was. So we've already got those answers. So I can say one minus those situations rather than working out a complete new situation. And so one minus the one in 125 and the 16 in 125, we get the 108 in 125. So the basic probability ideas are still useful. So in this case, I use that complementary event idea that, hey, everything's got to add up to one. Sometimes it's easier to work out the probability of something not happening than it is to work out the probability of something happening. Right, so that's the basic counting idea. We're interested in specific types of situations, what's called permutations and combinations. So we'll start with permutations. And all a permutation is, is an ordered set of objects. So the events have to happen in a specific order. Let's look at the first case. N different objects from a set of N different objects. So I've got N different objects, I'm going to use them all basically. So I'm going to order all of the objects. Right? So I'm going to use all of the objects. Okay. So we're going to arrange N objects in a line. Imagine I'm just going to line them up out the front of this room here. How many ways could we do it? Well, let's imagine those N objects are in the corner over there. I'm just going to call them over one by one and say, here, just line up. But I've got to pick who's going to come out. How many do I have to pick from? N. So that very first person's in. Now I'm going to get the second person. How many ways can I pick? So it's still the basic counting idea. So n minus 1, then the next object, n minus 2. But I'm going to be using all of them. So I'm going to get a point where there's only one object left. And I'm going to say, well, how many ways can I get that one? Well, one. If there's only one left, got to get them. And they'll be the last person we put in the line. Now, n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to 1 in mathematics 
We have a notation for that. You may recall it. Factorial. And so we can say, ah, oh, n factorial. So if I'm going to use all the objects, going to arrange them in a line, n factorial ways of doing it. All right. So, going to arrange in a line. Five boys and four girls. Often you'll see the first part of a question will be, there are no restrictions. This is not a probability question, but the first part is, if you like, working out, if I was going to do probability, this will be the bottom of the fraction. If you like, all the possibilities, no restrictions. So very often it'll be the, the first question. Okay, going to line up five boys, four girls in a line. How many ways can I do it? Well, if there's no restrictions, it doesn't matter that I've got five boys and four girls. I've just got nine people. Or nine objects, if you like. So it'll be nine factorial. There you go, 362,880 different ways. And we could have fun right now, really. We could get nine people and show that that is, in fact, correct. But it could take us some time to do all the different possibilities. All right, let's put some restrictions on it. Boys and girls alternate. Hmm. Five boys, four girls. Got to look after the restriction. The boys and the girls alternate. What is the first restriction? Because we've got a different number. If I start with a the girl, they won't be able to alternate. Because I'll run out of girls. And I'll be left with two boys at the end. Right? So it has to start with a boy. First person must be a boy. So that's one. Haven't actually put any in the line yet. But I'm saying there's one way I can choose the first person. Has to be a boy. So if they were um, the same number of boys and girls, I'd start off with two. I could start with a boy or I could start with a girl. Times factorial, five factorial. How many ways can I arrange the five boys? Five factorial. There's five of them. Right. But all that's going to happen now is I'm going to get the four girls and say, I want you to fill the gaps in between the boys. So they'll still just arrange themselves four factorial ways and slot themselves into the line in between the boys. And we'll, we'll have the alternating that we want. So times four factorial, number of ways of arranging those girls. And that gets us 2,880 different ways of doing it. So therefore, there, here comes the next logical question if we're talking about probability. Probability of the boys and girls alternating, well, I now know that'll be 2,880 on 360, 2,880. Didn't have to draw up a huge sample space. All I was interested in is how many ways things could happen. Uh, so 1 in 126. What happens if, it's so the same situation, they're not alternating now. We're just going to arrange them, but two girls, they're great friends, they want to be next to each other because they're just going to talk. So that is our restriction. We're going to look after them first. So our group over here, there's our nine people. What? Two of them want to be together. All right, come on. How many ways can these two girls be arranged? No, it's just two people, two factorial. So we work that out. When you two, you want to be together, you just work out which way around you want to go. Two factorial ways of doing that. Haven't put them in the line yet. So now these two people, it's like they link arms. They're now one person. They're to be treated as one person. They've worked out which order they're going to go in. So they're going to be treated like one person. So my question now is not how many ways am I going to arrange nine objects. It's now eight objects. Because I've got the seven that are quite happy to be anywhere. And then I've got our little group of two that want to be together. Eight objects all up. So eight factorial. And there's our answer, 80,640. So now case two, we're going to arrange k objects from n. K is less than n. So some people are going to get left behind over there. We're not going to use all of them. Okay. So we're only going to use some of the objects. Okay. N different objects in a line, but we're only going to arrange k of them. How many ways can we do it? Well, the first person, there's still N I can choose from. There's my group of N over here. Going to go get the first one. Yeah, there's N ways I can get that first one. That hasn't changed. There's still N minus 1 ways I could get the second one. That hasn't changed. There's still N minus 2 to get the third one. That hasn't changed. Problem is I'm going to keep going, keep going, but I'm going to stop when I get to the Kth person. Okay, I'm trying to get the kth person. How many ways can I get the kth person? Have a look at the pattern. 
Three objects and minus two. Two objects and minus one. Logically, k objects would be... Yeah, so n minus k minus... Well, if you put it in brackets, k minus one or n minus k plus one, depending on how you write it. So n minus k plus one. And I'll stop there. Of course, that's rather awkward. It'd be nice if we had a neater way of doing that. So what I do is I multiply it by this thing, which is one, because it's the same on top and bottom. But what it actually is, it's the number of ways of arranging the objects I didn't use. It's the number of ways of arranging the objects I didn't use. So there's n minus k objects left. So n minus k factorial, if you like. Why did I do that? Because then I can say, oh, on the top of the fraction is n factorial, bottom of the fraction, n minus k. So what this permutation is saying, hey, n factorial would be if I arrange them all, but I'm going to divide out the number of ways I could the objects that I didn't use. So I divide by the n minus k, the ones I didn't use. Because they, they, the order of those people doesn't matter because I'm not using them. So n factorial, n minus k factorial. That is n p k on your calculator. Uh, it's still handy to know the factorial notation because sometimes it's quicker to just cancel the factorials and, and things like that. But on your calculator, NPK or some say NPR, doesn't really matter what the letter is. P for obviously permutation. So all right, here we go. Problems. We're going to make five-letter words. So we're not going to use all the letters. So how many five-letter words can we make from problems? Now, this is maths, not English. So, you know, oblem is a word. Yeah. Melbo is a word. <laughs> Blems is a word. Okay. Smell if you go backwards, yes. Okay, so as far as we're concerned, they are words. So, 8P5. There are eight letters I've got. I'm going to arrange five of them. It's an arrangement, so P for permutation. 8P5 which is 6,720. If you were doing it uh, manually, you'd say, well, that's 8 factorial divided by the 3 factorial that I don't use. So 8 factorial divided by the 3 factorial that I don't use, which means I've got 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. Oh, God, what's that work out to be? I was hoping no one would go to their calculator because it's right there, yes. 6,720. Okay. Hey, I'm going to make it more interesting. The words have to begin with the letter P. Has to begin with P. So we look after the restriction first. Number of ways I could do it has to start with P. So how many ways could I do that? One, I put P in the first spot. It's the only way I can do it. So now I need another four letters from problems. So 7P4. It's like saying how many four-letter words from problems. So 7P4... Uh, 840. 840. Okay. Let's make it even more interesting. P is included, but not at the beginning. And M is excluded. We don't like M today. We're not going to use it in our word. So P is included, not at the beginning. M is excluded. How many ways can we do this? Look after the condition. I'm going to put P somewhere in the word. How many ways could I do it? Four. Can't go in the first spot, but it could go in any of the other four. Right? So P is included, not at the beginning. Four ways I could do it. The other problem is M is excluded. So now it becomes four-letter words from Robles. Because I'm not using M. So that's 6P4. So 4 times 6P4, 1440. Let's try this one. Six people are in a boat. The boat has eight seats. Four spelt incredibly poorly on each side. <laughs> All right. What's the probability that Bill and Ted are on the left side and Greg's on the right side? Okay. So I want to work out the bottom of the fraction first. Number of ways it can happen, no restrictions. So there's just eight seats. Going to use six of them. So 8P6 would go on the bottom of the fraction. Now, work out the top of the fraction. Bill and Ted 
want to both be on the left-hand side. So, okay, Bill and Ted, you're being awkward, but you want to be on the left-hand side. Go find your seat. How many ways can they do it? Only 4P2, because they're not using the right-hand side. They only have four to choose from. And then Greg goes, well, if they're going on that side, I want to go on the other. So, Greg, all right, you go pick your seat, 4P1. And the rest go, I don't know what they were on about, we don't care. So how many seats are left? And how many people left? Three. So 5P3. So 4P2, 4P1, 5P3, 2,880. But remember the question was, what is the probability? So now we tie it all together. Be 2,880 over 2,160. One in seven. One in seven chance. HSC question. Sophia has five coloured blocks. Red, blue, green, yellow and white. And she's going to create towers. Now for the sake of this example, a tower has to be more than one block. Because if you get one block, that's not a tower, that's a block. All right? But as soon as you get two blocks, it now becomes a tower. So two, three, four or five blocks create a tower. So the question is, how many different towers that are three blocks high. Oh, well, they're all different colours, so the arrangement would make different towers. So 5p3. So from the five blocks, going to use three of them, and I'm going to arrange them. So 5p3. So 60. How many different towers could she form in total? Well, towers could be two, three, four, or five blocks. So two block towers, that would be 5p2. Three block towers, we just worked out, 60. Four block towers would be 5p4, another 120. And then five block towers, use them all, five factorial, 120. So in total, there are 320 towers that could be made. All right, time to pause. 10e will start on the odd ones, just not 39. 